Crash by Jerry Spinelli, chapters 23 and 24, read for you by Mrs. Shoemaker. Chapter 23 On the football field, I don't run around people. I run through them. Life is football. For a couple of minutes there, I had forgotten. And then I remembered. I was the holder of the single game touchdown record for Springfield Middle School. I was five foot seven and a half, 154 pounds. I was wearing a 10 pizza shirt. I was Crash Coogan. No more messing around. No more cruising by with the little dinky waves and hoping she'd smile at me. I walked right up to her like those girlfriends of hers weren't there. Like nothing was there but those brown eyes of hers getting bigger and bigger like the eyes of a free safety just before I plow him under. Hi, Jane, I said. How you doing? Thought you might come to the dance. Is that new hairdo? One hand started up like it was going to touch her hair, then stopped. Her face didn't know what to do either. It was like, gah. Then she, she was totally off guard. The crasher was on the charge. The crasher loved it. Not really, she said at last. No, I said, rolling now, smiling, shedding tacklers. Well, it looks different. Anyway, it looks real nice. She was ready to say thank you, but I just rolled on. Tell you one thing that is new. I patted my chest. This shirt. Got it at Jackman's. Maybe you don't know because you're new here, but that's a men's store. I can wear men's sizes. I gave her a wink. I guess you could wear women's sizes, huh? Those big browns were looking up at the crash man. Before I could grin and say you better believe it, I went on. I hope you like all those TDs I'm scoring. Tell you what, next game my first TD will be just for you, okay? I was remembering how the big-time jocks in high school and college get all the girls they want. And I was thinking, hey, it's true. And I wanted to say, I really like how you hand hardly use any makeup. But I didn't know how to say it, at least with words. But my hand knew what how to do it. My hand was reaching out to say it, to touch that perfect, unmade-up face. The most beautiful face I ever saw. My fingertips never reached her cheek. She slapped them away. It didn't make sense, so I ignored it. I smiled bigger than ever and took her hand and started towing her away. Hey, let's dance, okay? She jerked her hand out of mine, and for the second time in five minutes, I heard that word, no. I said, huh? She jabbed her hands into her hips. She glared. Who do you think you are? I grinned. I don't know where I got the words. I don't know if I got the words from a movie or what, but they were there. I'm the answer to your dreams, baby. Stone cold silence. Frozen face. For the first time ever, she was looking at me, really looking. And then she laughed. Not giggled, laughed. Her friends laughed. They kept on laughing. Jane had her hand over her mouth. Another had tears, another was doubled over cramping up. I knew they were laughing at me. But if they thought I cared, they didn't know me. Crash Coogan never, got it, never, gives up. So I just cranked up a chuckle of my own, reached out, and took her hand again, and headed back out to the dance floor. This time, when she tried to yank herself free, she couldn't. The grip of iron had her. And then she kicked me right above my heel, in my Achilles tendon. My leg buckled. I let go of her. I turned. I was about ready to stop being nice. Hey, I said. What are you trying to do? You know what you just did? I didn't wait for an answer. You just kicked my Achilles tendon. Do you know that's about the worst thing you could do to a running back? If you snap your Achilles, you're out for a year, minimum. Maybe two. And even after that, you might never be the same. I glared at her, letting it sink in. Girls, even cheerleaders, don't know anything about football. They could care less about what it takes to be a pro. She finally said something. You. Her lips curled, showing her teeth. Hey, 
Don't do that, I warned. It ruins your looks. Her lip went higher. If you ever touch me again, I'm going to scream and get you kicked out of school. If you ever kick my Achilles again, you won't have a mouth to scream with, I told her. She looked like she was going to laugh again, but she just gave an unladylike snort and wagged her head. You are the biggest jerk I have ever met in my life. Thank you, I said pleasantly. She went rambling on. You think you're so great. I bowed. Thank you. But you're just pathetic. You have a big mouth. You bully people around. You don't care about anybody's feelings. You're just a big, dumb, obnoxious jockstrap. I didn't really care about the words. What I cared about was that finally Jane Forbes was standing still and facing me and talking to me. I think I was about to reach out and take her hand for a third time when who shows up but Spider Webb. Chapter 24 He was wearing his usual thrift shop rags, except for the shirt. It was a t-shirt that had been printed up to read, Stall the Mall. You believe it? And as usual, he didn't have a clue about what was going on. He just barged in from his own little universe, all perky. Greetings, fellow students. Hi, Pen, said Jane. I would have given my left nostril for the smile she shot him. Did you get it? Webb held up a plastic bag. Yep. He took something from it, a t-shirt. He shook it open, displayed it. It said the same thing as his. Jane squealed and snatched it, and right there she pulled it on over her other shirt. She modeled it. Webb and her girlfriends clapped. That's really stupid, I said. What makes you think you can stop a mall with a couple of t-shirts? Oh, not just a couple, said Webb. We're going to get everybody in school to wear one. Everybody in town. I laughed. You're crazier than I thought. If you think all of these kids are going to wear that thing. Whoever heard of trying to stop a mall? Anybody who doesn't want a mall is... I wasn't sure what the word meant, but Jane had used it on me and it felt right. Obnoxious. Well, he said. Somebody in your own family's joining in. Abby has one. I poked him in his skinny, sunken chest. I kept poking him, backward, until he was against the wall. You let my family out of this. If I ever catch you doing this stuff around my house, you'll I'll have your butt for breakfast. And stay away from my sister, you hear? She's little, so she doesn't know any better. I gave him a final poke. Understand? I had him nailed to the wall with one finger. Behind me I could hear kids rushing over, whispers of fight mixed with the music. I was waiting for an answer when Jane reached in and pulled my finger away. Anybody else, and I would have clubbed them. You want a dance pen? she said. She took his hand and pulled him away through the mob. Mike came over. We just stood there watching them dance. When the song was over, I said, Come on, let's get out of this dump. As we left, I made sure we passed Webb and Jane coming off the dance floor. I took a quick half-step to the left, set my legs, and rammed him into him with my shoulder. He went flying on his rear about ten feet across the dance floor. Oh, I said real sorry-like. Excuse me. And we were out the door.